So, Barry, tell me about the sample you've put together for this particular mission. You mean this that amazing very little one. CD that <laughs> looks like vinyl? That I have to say, that is an incredible thing. When you first showed me that, it looks like it's a vinyl, but it's yeah, not. Yeah, it's very authentic, and it's got an original Capitol Records style sleeve, and we've kind of adapted it for Gotham Records. But that, you know, I've probably done 60 samplers. I mean, I've done thousands of tracks, but 60 actual samplers for missions like this. This, I think, is genuinely my favourite, and I think the reason why, the, one of the qualities I very high on all the standard, but at one end of the spectrum we've got 13-year-old artist Lillian P, who's a singer-songwriter, we've just signed the label. At the other end of the spectrum we've got Trevor Saul, who's at least 50 plus, will say, we'll be kind to Trevor. Um, both musical geniuses, in, in you know, but yet so many years between them. Then we've got um, Codeine, which are a great band, very, the same, very kind of, they're indie, but they sound very Bowie to me in their style. We've got Luke Guy Reed. Luke again, he's about 66 years old, but done on a brilliant traditional classic country album. And we've been successful with these music into films in the past. So, so a real sort of mixture there as well. And you've got Simon Astley on there as Simon well. Simon Astley's our pop yeah. star from Australia. Yes. We've got real out and out, real sort of Ed Candy type dance music as well with Norma yeah. Lewis and Pimp and Jam. And we've got ADF Shift, which is which is rock metal. So there's different genres on there, and, and that's, as Gotham Records, we're a record label, and it's like having my very own jukebox. I put the money in, and I decide what plays. So I kind of like that. And I, I love genres of music, because, you know, sometimes you feel like Rod, sometimes you feel like Barbara Streisand. So a genre allows you to change moods. Um, and I'm always a, a great believer you don't have to like a piece of music to respect it. Like, for example, when ABBA first was successful in 1974, um, where they had the, the hit with Waterloo because they were in the Eurovision Song Contest, oh, they drove me mad. I thought they were atrocious. I never liked ABBA, but my God, do I respect them. Not just because of the years of success, but they were good songs, well, well constructed songs. Um, and they stand the test of time. And, as well, and they have, they? and they don't date, and they never stop being brilliant. Mm. So, I, if I like a genre, if it's done well in that genre, then it's a good song and it's a good production. And, I, and I'm very, very proud of this. Um, as I said, I've got hopes for Lillian. She could even be my pension, hopefully. Um, and Trevor, mm -hmm. you know, Trevor goes way back. He was signed to EMI 25, 30, 35 years ago. Um, he's, 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 his album, Olo, has, has got so many awards here in America. He's up for some more blues awards in the UK. He's out in Nashville soon recording another album. So he's an established artist that just keeps going and going and going. And, uh, so I mean, it's a real mixture then, isn't it? You've got yeah, the established, yeah. you've got the new up and coming. And that's me. That's yeah. who I am, really. I, I, I work with major artists. and I'm, I'm as comfortable sat with Brian Wilson as I am with Lillian P. Because I'm sat opposite musical geniuses. And that, for me, is... Don't tell anybody, but that's the bit I really love. I just love being amongst the greats. I can't write music and I don't record music. I, I produce stuff uh, and executive produce stuff, but they're the, they're the geniuses and I kind of just like being amongst them, really. So it's really important then to you, Barry, that you have your Gotham Records, um, you know, your record company, and that's, that's what brings you to, to Los Angeles for this particular sync mission. Um, what is it about this sync mission you think that has been, you know, perhaps surpassed all others? I think we get more experience as we come here. This is my fifth, and you get better. What the Sync Mission has taught me, it doesn't matter how good my piece of music is, and you always think of a film and a music supervisor putting a piece of music into a film that he likes, his favourite bands. It's not like that at all. A music supervisor wants a piece of music that fits a brief he's been given to by an editor that may not even understand music. He just That's the brief. He comes to me with the brief, and if he wants a male vocal, 144 beats a minute, I shouldn't give him a female vocal, 80 beats a minute, because he thinks I'm an idiot, and I would be. It teaches you to be better. I think that some of us have been on the mission several times. I know about half of them have been at least once before, two or three times maybe. So we, we get closer as people, and we understand the hard bits and the difficult bits we have to do. The, I can't praise the British government and UK time enough for supporting music. They don't in America. There is no support at all. And if I think value for money, this probably is the best mission in the world I, and I, and I've, that I've ever been on. 
And I've been to Japan and I go to lots of missions, whether it be Medium or Popcom in Germany or, you know, all of those things. Pound for pound, this is the best value. And I think I kind of like the snobbery in the fact that there are only 35 British companies here. Yes, we could hire a bigger room. We work in Capital A uh, Studio A at Capital Records and Capital Studios, which is the, the famous iconic building. And you couldn't fit many more people in there, but we could hire a bigger room, we could go to a hotel, we could go to a big club. I like the fact that we sit in a room and you can still smell Frank Sinatra. And you walk down the corridor and you think, and there's one corridor and it leads to Studio A, B and C. So everybody's had to go down that corridor. And so it's kind of quite... You, you walk feel it. History, maybe. You walk down. You're walking on the shoulders of giants. This goes way, way back. Fifty. I think it's their sixtieth anniversary this year. So congratulations to Capitol Records. But you go back to those acts that were recording then, whether it be Ella Fitzgerald, and then come right through to Beach Boys, Beatles, Mick Jagger, right up to you know acts that are recording them now. I know Rod Stewart made his last video when we was here there last time. And a lot of new artists are in. Yesterday, I'm in the studio, and Burt Bacharach's next door. I mean, you can't put a price on it. And he's walking the same corridor as me. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm walking the same corridor as him. I don't know, but we definitely walk in the same corridor. <laughs> and, and that, for me, is me having a sweet shop. I'm in the cookie jar. And that's the bit that I love. And it is incredible that Capital Records has still got this unbelievable reputation mm -hmm. for excellence, really. You know, it's well known worldwide that that mm -hmm. is the place to come and record. And as you say, big artists come there, you know, up and coming artists want to be there. You know, young musicians that are coming onto the scene aspire to be there. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's always going to be the case, though, with Capital? I don't think there'll be another Capital in the way I don't think there'll be another Abbey Road. And the main reason for that is technology. A lot of work's done in a basement now, and a lot of work's done on the hoof, and things are created using Pro Tools. But I think if you want inspiration, you want to go into Studio A. I mean, we go to Studio A on a mission, and we have 150 music supervisors talk to us how we might make money from our music. And all I can hear, you know, is, is that still Frank Sinatra's echo? And there's the podium that they all stood at, and it's been there for all those years. And as I said, Burt Bacharach was next door with a 30-piece orchestra this week. There was a couple of female singers in. And that's the inspiration, I think, when you, when, you, when you get up and switch your laptop on, you may be inspired to write a song or record a piece of music. When you go into a studio, it must be like when you go into an art gallery, you're inspired to recreate that art. And I think that's the thing. Um, so for me, I like the coziness of the fact that there's 35 companies in there. We only have five delegates at a time because there isn't room. And we have these sessions every sort of two hours. Um, I'm very, very privileged to do that. And, I'm, and I, I love the fact that I own a record company. And I don't know what owning a record company really means these days because I think anybody can release a track on iTunes. And if you're on iTunes, you're in the same store as Madonna. But it's a bit like when you used to go to HMV and Virgin Records years ago. Of course, Madonna was there, but she was record of the week at the front of the counter. Your record was 2,000 tracks back. On iTunes, you're 30 million tracks back. So being on iTunes and having a record out is good, and it's a great thing. But it's not like being represented by a record company, where the record company... Artists often criticise management and agents and and they criticise record companies, and I, I kind of get that. We all, we all nitpick about things in our lives, but, but we're also the creative ones. We didn't write the song, but we got it to people. We didn't write the song, but we funded the recording. We didn't sing the song, but we made people hear it. And we are creators in our own way. I, I, I think the gift that God gave me and, and this will always be the case. He made me a music fan, but didn't let me be a musician. He made me love voices, but didn't let me be a singer. So I'm able to enjoy everything I do as a music fan. I don't listen to the drums and say the snare should be louder, put the vocal eye in the mix, I can't hear the guitar, where's the bass? I listen to a piece of music. That's a gift. 
that has served me for 44 years. And I'm looking forward to the next 44 years. And I'll still be buying albums then, hopefully. Oh, well, Barry, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And uh, we'll come back and see you again when you're here next year. Thank you very much. Mike. Thank you.